Hi, and welcome to The True Show. I'm Leslie Lambert. And I'm Nick Gelfand. And we're excited to announce that you can find us now at thetrueshow.com. Our new URL. As well as, the, as well as True Show on Twitter and True Show on Facebook. So go like us all over the place. <laughs> if you can't get enough of us. That's right. We're very adorable. So, Leslie, you know how they say you can buy the Brooklyn Bridge? Yeah. Well, now you might be able to actually buy the Empire State Building. Awesome. Um, the Empire State Building, which is, um, you know, essentially a symbol of U.S. innovation um, since 19, it was completed in 1931. It's a 102-story uh, building, and it's been owned by the Malkin family um, through various uh, smaller companies um, since uh, 1961. Wow. And actually, they purchased the ground below it in 2002. Which is not a cheap endeavor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, what happened is they uh, recently filed with U U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission for an IPO. Um, there are some lawsuits pending from some minority owners, but they're looking to uh, take uh, the Empire, Empire State Building public. So they'll sell off parts of it? Actually, or they, they well, want to sell the whole thing. They're, they're combining everything to do essentially a real estate trust, and then they'll be selling shares of the trust. Wow. Which will be interesting for those of you who are looking to invest in the Empire State Building. Um, just as a side note, it was recently appraised for $2.52 billion. So let's, let's do it. Absolutely. But some, 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 <laughs> of, some of the actually minority stakeholders are, are suing the Malkin family because they're saying they're undervaluing the stock. Oh. So and uh, actually, um, you know, it, the the building houses many, you know, many uh, businesses, including actually the um, the East Coast headquarters of eBay, um, use that as an office. Interesting. So, anybody wants to buy Empire State Building might be possible soon. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't know that I can afford it, but that's cool. <laughs> Absolutely. So things are, uh, you know, always on, the, everybody's always interested in what's going on in the housing market. And recently Warren Buffett, which is, he's known as the Oracle of Omaha, yep. came out with some interesting comments about housing recovery. Um, and he was talking about the fact that um, single family homes, in his opinion now, are the best investment possible. And that if you're looking to make an investment, it's better than the stock market or anything else. And he was actually quoted as saying if it was feasible, he'd be out buying millions of single-family homes for himself. Yeah. And, and specifically the distressed ones. Yes. Um, the, the one thing that I always found interesting about Warren Buffett, his net worth that was listed at most recently at $39 billion, is that he still lives in the same three-bedroom home that yeah. he's lived in for 50 years. He bought this home for th something like $31,000 yeah. uh, right around the time he got married, right after he got married. And he, when asked about it, he basically says that he has everything he needs in the home, so there's no real reason to move. Um, this home is like a three-bedroom um, in, you know, in, in a pretty decent uh, neighborhood of Omaha, you know, something you would probably see maybe you know, a, a dentist live in. You know, so, you know, it, it, it's a higher-level home, but certainly not, not exorbitantly a $39 billion. <laughs> You, let's just say you will not see it on MTV Cribs anytime soon. <laughs> well, it was when I first learned about that, I was surprised too because, you know, he's loaded. So you would expect that he'd be in some fancy mansion somewhere and have multiple Absolutely. homes all over the place. And, be, and he just doesn't do that jet-setting lifestyle at all. But so his, his uh, opinion was that because there is still uh, somewhat of a, a market with the distressed properties that are still laying there and the interest rates are so cheap that you mortgage yourself out on uh, you know, as many of these properties as you possibly can afford and hang on to them because you can get decent rents for them right now and manage them as rental properties and then when the market recovers sufficiently you'll have net gain in the equity and if you decide that it's time to sell you'll make you know way more profit than you could have returned on uh, stocks or any other investment so he, he, he's certainly somebody I would listen to I mean as as the chairman of uh, Berkshire Hathaway he's done pretty well for himself I think the company when it was taken public originally went for like nineteen dollars a share now it's in the 100 plus range per share mm -hmm. and he owns the majority of them yeah and my favorite quote i want to read this so that i get it right he's very plain spoken as anybody who's listened to any of his interviews or read his reports and this was from his report he said that um, the housing market will come back because some human factors can't be denied forever 
People may postpone hitching up during uncertain times, but eventually hormones take over, he wrote. And while doubling up may be the initial reaction of some during a recession, living with in-laws can quickly lose its allure. Yes, yes it can. <laughs> yes it can, or living with your parents in general. Yeah. You know, so, and, and, and you know, the first time home buyers out there will be the ones that ultimately will, will pick up all these properties. Yeah. And it does make sense. Yeah, so get out of your in-laws house, buy a house. Buy a house. Listen to Warren Buffett. Absolutely. So speaking of houses, how's the market in Massachusetts, Nick? Well, in our last couple of shows, we uh, we talked about specifically some towns, but what we, we thought would be interesting to do is to come to show you and compile the stats for the state of Massachusetts, which is our home state where we film from. And uh, what we found in, in just to kind of sum, summarize 2011, in all of Massachusetts, and this is uh, of course all MLS statistics only. Um, you know, does not include private sales. Um, but again, it's a good gauge of uh, how the market is doing. Um, there was 36,403 total homes, single family homes sold. The average days on the market uh, in 2011 was 131 days. Uh, the median sale price in Massachusetts is $290,000. Um, if you compare it to 2010, the total sales were 36,946, so that's compared to 36,403, so very, very close. Yeah. The average days on the market was, was 118 in 2010, so as compared to the 131 in 2011, slightly up um, for days on the market. So marketing time has increased a little bit. And the median price in 2010 was 298, $298,000. So the median price did slightly uh, dip, to $290,000. However, it's not, you know, not tremendously, not very volatile. Uh, certainly a little bit of market fluctuation, but nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Um, if, and if you compare it uh, to, right now we're 2012, so I thought we'd look back in 2002, you know, essentially two um, ten a decade ten, ago. A decade ago, to maybe help us understand how this market will be ten years later. Uh, in 2010, uh, in 2002, the total sales were 43,000. 220. So certainly more houses were selling right. in the in the early 2000s. Um, the average days on the market was 73. So I mean that is you know a little bit over two months. Quick. That is really really quick. quick. And then the median sale price was 290, 290 thousand dollars, which is the same which as is the last same as year, 2011. So <clears throat> that's good news. Yeah, people that so realistically people that bought in 2002 you know, are basically even with their homes uh, mm -hmm. in 2011. You know, it, it, real estate is a lot clearer, clearer in retrospect. You know, in the rear view mirror, we can definitely see, you know, how the market is doing. So there's no way to tell how the 2012 market will turn out to be. But looking at some of these statistics, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, clears up the previous Let's for see. us. It lets us know that the market from 2010 to 2011 uh, has not really uh, changed too much. Um, and actually, it's it, probably important to note as well, in 2009, the median sale price was 285 So from 2009 to 2010 and 11, it actually did slightly increase. Um, so that is Massachusetts in a nutshell. Well, thank you all for watching. This is The True Show. And again, I'm Leslie Lambert. And I'm Nick Gelfing. See you next time.